I think I was a little bit afraid of the fact that I was falling in love with her and I didn't know how to really reconcile that with this image of myself as being this perfect Christian. Whatsoever you sow, that's what, kind of that's what you're going to reap. Beth Carlson Molina has risked a lot to be with her wife. Getting married meant losing friends, a job, a church, and a home. But even more than that, it meant giving up her idea of being the perfect Christian, an image that came from growing up the daughter of a Baptist minister in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I really wanted to please everybody, and I was kind of a perfectionist, so I I think faith became part of that for me, like I had to do church right as well, like I had to keep all the rules and, and follow everything just right and um, know all of the Bible verses and do my daily readings and things like that. So it became part of sort of my, yeah, my people pleasing personality to try to get faith right. So Beth tried to get faith right, but almost instinctively she knew that being gay was wrong. Growing up, as I started to notice that I was drawn to women and I wasn't drawn to date men, um, I think I started to wonder if that was where I was, you know, where my attractions were heading. But I, it was almost like I couldn't consciously let myself realize that because I had this image of myself as being um, good and godly and, and perfect in some ways. And I, and to even let myself think about that was um, ruining that picture of myself. So ignorance was sort of, and denial was the name of the game. So with her sexuality denied, Beth headed off to seminary to become a Baptist minister. And waiting to pick her up at the airport was her new roommate, Denise. So how would you describe your relationship initially? Initially, um, we hit it off really well right away. We were really good friends. Um, we, I had just finished a biology degree, so I enjoyed um, exploring the West Coast outside with her. We lived right by the beach, so I would go learn about all the birds and the plants and teach her things. And then she introduced me to um, really good music because I had been pretty sheltered in terms of music and uh, good beer because I, I was not a beer drinker <laughs> until, <laughs> until I went to seminary. <laughs> By year three, Beth and Denise's relationship grew, and Beth's denial of her sexuality became more and more difficult. Meeting Denise and also just deciding to become a pastor, I realized that I had to start dealing with this. I couldn't just keep pushing it to the back. And I didn't want to jeopardize my friendship with Denise either. I didn't want to, you know, accidentally kiss her and then not be able to be friends with her anymore. So I decided to come out to um, a pastor who I felt was safe. The pastor didn't have a problem with Beth being gay, but she did. Beth was taught the Bible condemned homosexuality, so she started to do research to see if that was really true. And I expected it to be like an open and shut case for the conservative side, because that's all I knew. And I'd always been taught that anybody trying to make the Bible say anything else was just twisting the scriptures and was not being honest. But then I was startled to find that there were some really amazing points that were made by people on the more progressive side of evangelical Christianity. People who were reading the scriptures in different ways with different emphases and looking at cultural context and historical context. Doing research helped Beth rethink what she'd been taught about gay people, but meeting them convinced her. I think what really helped was to meet some other LGBT Christians um, who were in relationships. There's this line in the scriptures um, where Jesus says, you'll know a good tree by its good fruit and a bad tree by its bad fruit. And I just saw so much good fruit in the lives of these other LGBT Christians. And I couldn't deny that they had the spirit of God in them and that they were serving him. After graduating, Beth and Denise worked at Baptist churches now the only thing that stood in their way of getting married was their religion. We could head in the direction of being ordained and sort of being legitimate pastors and heading along that, that road, but we knew that if we went that way, we would not be able to be married to one another because that wasn't allowed and still isn't allowed in our denomination for ordained pastors. And so the other path was to 
um, leave behind that denomination that had been like a second home for us, like a family for us our whole lives, and, um, and head in a different direction and be able to marry one another. Next on Heaven or Hell, decision time for Beth and Denise. I think it was one of the hardest years of both of our lives. Mm -hmm. 